Today we will recap the movie named Let Us Pray, 2014. The story of the movie takes place in a small town in Scotland. In this town, there's a man who is around middle-aged. While this is happening, a group of blackbirds called ravens start flying towards the town. Then, a policewoman named Rachel wakes up from a scary dream. After waking up, she notices a black feather on her pillow. She examines it for a moment, and then she gets ready for her first night working at the police station. While Rachel is walking, she spots the man standing in the middle of the road. As she's looking at him, a car comes speeding towards the man and crashes into him. Rachel reacts quickly and rushes to the car. The person driving the car, a young man named Caesar, gets out to see what happened. Both Caesar and Rachel are surprised to see that the man's body has disappeared, even though there are blood stains on the front of the car and the windshield is broken. Taking advantage of the confusion, Caesar tries to leave the scene by saying that nobody was hurt. However, Rachel doesn't believe him and decides to arrest him. She takes him to the police station. Once there, Rachel meets a police officer named Sergeant McCready. The officer explains explains to Rachel that Caesar is a person they often deal with because he keeps doing illegal things. In another scene, there are two other police officers named Constable Warnock and Mundy. They're in a car and doing something they shouldn't be doing together. Rachel contacts them and asks them to search for the man that Caesar hit with his car. While Rachel and the sergeant are talking about the blood on the car's lights, Caesar remembers a time when he hit a girl with his car. The sergeant tells Rachel that they couldn't keep Caesar in custody for too long because there wasn't a victim. However, they end up putting Caesar in a cell. In the meantime, Rachel goes downstairs and sees another person who's been arrested. This person, Beswick, hurt his wife and caused harm to an unborn baby. After locking up Caesar, Rachel and the sergeant go outside and talk. Two officers who were on patrol arrive at the police station with the man they were looking for. They bring him in and start asking him questions, but he doesn't say anything. The police officers think he might be acting strangely because he's under the influence of something, so they call for a doctor. A doctor named Dr. Hume comes to the police station and checks the man. Dr. Hume realizes that the man is not not unable to talk due to being intoxicated, he just doesn't want to talk. While Dr. Hume is treating the man, the man says something that makes Dr. Hume remember a recent crime he committed. Dr. Hume gets aggressive and tries to hurt the man, so the police officers restrain him and take him to the basement, putting him in a cell. Back in the basement, Caesar and Beswick notice Dr. Hume's presence and ask him why he's there, but he remains silent. The police officers then take the man's fingerprints to figure out who he is. They discover that his name is Alexander Monroe and that he died in a fire accident in 1983. They're confused about how he can still be alive. They ask him questions about why the doctor tried to attack him and what he knows, but he talks about something else. This makes the sergeant, McCready, remember bad things he's done in the past, and he gets angry. He tells Rachel to take the man to the basement. While she's taking him to the cell, Rachel has some visions of her own childhood where she was tied up and hurt. Then, as Mundy is locking up the cell, she has a vision of herself killing someone. This scares her, and she runs out of there in a panic. Soon, Rachel goes to talk to Mundy and asks her what's wrong. But Mundy doesn't want to talk about it and turns Rachel away. Later, another police officer named Warnock tells the sergeant that Dr. Hume's wife isn't answering calls. The sergeant tells them to go to Hume's house and informs them that Hume is locked up. Then, the sergeant puts Rachel in charge of the police station and goes to investigate something related to Alexander. While all the other officers are gone, Rachel checks a book and starts having visions of herself being hurt. She looks at the names in the book and finds out that everyone listed there is dead. Back at the cell, the people who are locked up up talk about themselves. Alexander, the mysterious man, calls out Beswick's name and reminds him of the bad things he's done. Beswick admits to hurting his wife and getting arrested, but when asked to confess, he avoids taking responsibility. Then, something strange happens. Alexander lights a matchstick, and a shadowy hand reaches out to Beswick. The lights in his cell and the camera go off. Rachel notices this and is about to act when Warnock calls her, saying Hume's house is empty. Suddenly, Beswick starts acting as if he's possessed, hitting his head against the cell. Rachel rushes to the basement, opens his cell, and he runs out and falls down. Hume offers to help, and Rachel reluctantly lets him out. Hume quickly checks on Beswick and after seeing something, Beswick collapses. Rachel tries to call the sergeant, but he doesn't answer. Meanwhile, it's shown that the sergeant's house is full of dead bodies. He collects the body parts in a bag and takes them away to dispose of them. Rachel and Hume manage to get Beswick out of the basement. At the same time, Mundy and Warnock call Rachel. They find that Hume has killed his entire family. Hume hears this and tries to warn Rachel, but she hits him with a baton to control him. She restrains him, takes him to the basement, and locks him up. Caesar tells Rachel that Alexander told
told him they're all there for a reason, they made mistakes and now need to pay for them. Alexander asks Rachel what she did wrong, but she doesn't answer and leaves. She gets more visions of herself escaping from an abusive situation and running out of a house. At the same time, the sergeant has dead bodies at his house. He packs them up and calls Rachel. She updates him about Hume and Beswick. The sergeant tells her to handle the situation until he arrives. He takes a gun out of a box under his bed. Back in the basement, Caesar talks about his past mistakes, how he hit a girl with his car, and instead of helping her, he ran away. Alexander tells Caesar he still has time to make amends, but Caesar refuses, fearing more trouble. Mundy and Warnock return to the police station and tell Rachel about what they found at Hume's house. They notice Beswick's dead body and ask Rachel about it. She claims that Beswick committed suicide. Just as she's about to mention something strange about Alexander, they hurry to the doctor. They bring him out of the cell for interrogation. Warnock feels sad about Hume's children's deaths. Alexander talks to Warnock, reminding him of his own bad deeds, beating and killing someone. While Rachel and Mundy question the doctor, to find out why he committed the killings. Dr. Hume says he's trying to make people live forever by finding the soul and trapping it, so he can bring dead people back to life. While he's talking, Warnock arrives, and starts hitting the doctor. He beats him and kills him. Monday suggests they need to come up with a fake story to hide the truth. Rachel tries to stop them, but Mundy insists that this is the punishment he deserves. Rachel becomes aware when Caesar calls for her. She goes to check on him. Caesar admits he hit a girl with his car, and there's blood from the girl on his car. Then, Alexander steps in and says the girl has just died. Rachel asks Alexander how he knows this and who he is. She finds out that Alexander is the one who helped her escape from a bad situation when she was a child. Alexander reveals that Mundy and Warnock are planning to kill Rachel to hide their wrongdoings. After Rachel returns, she overhears Mundy and Warnock discussing their plan to murder her. Although Warnock hesitates, Mundy persuades him that no one should be left alive as a witness. Mundy plans to kill everyone else in the police station. In the meantime, Rachel receives a call from McCready and is caught. She subtly hints to McCready about Mundy and Warnock's intentions. They try to attack her, but Rachel fights back and tries to escape. However, they manage to capture her. Just as Warnock is about to harm her, McCready arrives and shoots Warnock. This fortunate turn of events provides Rachel and Mundy with an opportunity to escape. They run and hide in a room. McCready breaks the door and shoots Mundy in the shoulder. They escape to the basement. As he can't get in, McCready leaves. Rachel asks Alexander for help, but he refuses. The power goes out, and Rachel sees McCready pouring oil around the station. He pours oil down to the basement and sets it on fire. Rachel unlocks the cells and lets everyone out. When she asks Alexander for help, he says he can help her if she leaves the others to their fate. They wet blankets, cover themselves, and escape the flames. As they try to get away, McCready is waiting and tries to hurt them. Mundy slips and falls on broken glass. McCready hurts her badly and kills her. When McCready aims at Rachel, she throws something at him, injuring him. Rachel then crushes McCready's head. After escaping, Alexander joins Rachel. He crosses out the names of the dead people in the police station book while explaining their sins. It's revealed that Alexander is the devil, and he came to collect the souls of the people in the police station, which is like a waiting place. After marking the sinner's names, Rachel's picture appears in the book. Alexander saw her facing an abuser in the past and was impressed by her desire for justice. He asks her to join him in punishing the wicked for their sins. Rachel agrees, and they share a kiss. 